purposes of Lab 4 are to demonstrate some methods for generating random numbers using technology, and also to use those methods to investigate a core course concept, that of a sampling distribution. Now, to demonstrate this concept, we are going to be simulating two separate games. In game one, we will have the computer simulate the tossing of a fair six-sided die, and then we will simply record the number shown as our winnings. In the second game, we'll have the computer simulate 10 tosses of a fair die and we'll win the average shown. Now, both of these games are basically sampling from a population of the numbers 1 through 6, a population whose mean and standard deviation are easily computed. In game 1, we are drawing a sample of size 1, while in game 2, we are drawing a sample of size 10. And we'll see in this lab how the distribution of the corresponding amounts 1 depends on the sample size. There are a number of different ways to simulate sampling with Minitab. The easiest, if you're drawing from an integer distribution, for example, in our case, we simply want to draw from the numbers 1 through 6, is to go to Calc Random Data Integer. Now, we're going to start off by simulating game 1. And in game 1, we're just going to generate a single row of data. We're going to store it in column C1. and under minimum and maximum value, we'll enter the, the lowest possible value for the die roll and the maximum possible value. And so we can see now in cell C11 here, right, we ended up with a four, which means you won $4. Now we can go beyond this if we and, and calculate a large number of simulations from game one by using the option here to store more rows of data. So let's say I wanted to play game one a thousand times simply change this to a thousand and voila now we have a thousand separate rolls of a six-sided die once you have a thousand separate rolls of a six-sided die we can compute various statistics for example using the basic statistics command that we talked about in a previous lab i'm going to uncheck mark the ones which don't make sense to us yet in class and we can see here that of our thousand plays the mean of all our of all our winnings was fairly similar to the population mean, which was 1.5. Sorry, excuse me, 3.5, and the standard deviation was fairly close to the population standard deviation of 1.71. So what about game two? Okay. In game two, we want to simulate 10 rolls. So to simulate 10 rolls, what we're going to do here is I'm going to only play it once to start off. So I'm just going to generate a single row of data, but then I'm going to choose columns C1 through C10 in which to store the results, and that will generate 10 separate rolls of that single die. All right. So when we do that, now we've generated the 10 rolls. Right? In order to compute their mean, we can use the row statistics command, which is located under calc, yeah. checkmark mean, put input variables C1 through C10, and we'll store the result in C11. And voila, here we have our amount one in game two, $4 in this particular play. Just like we did with game one, it's interesting to simulate this game a large number of times, like a thousand times. So when I say that, I mean we're going to roll the die 10 times, calculate the mean, and then repeat that procedure a thousand times. So we're going to get a thousand different means here in this column. So to do that, we simply go back to random data integer, and instead of one row, we generate a thousand rows and still store the results in columns C1 through C10. Now, if we recalculate the row statistics, recall that's calc uh, row statistics, store the results in C11, everything's as before. Then notice C11 now contains the average amount one on each separate play of the thousand plays here. Now we can look at the statistics of the amount that we won in this game. So for example, as before, we can display descriptive statistics. And we can see that comparing this with the results of game one, the mean is fairly similar, again, close to the population mean. But notice the standard deviation of our winnings has drastically dropped. It's much smaller than before. In class, we either will have or will discuss the relationship between the sample size, in this case 10, in this case 1, and the actual standard deviation of the results of these sorts of games. Furthermore, 
if we graph out the distribution of the amounts one, so if we create a histogram of the amounts one, we can see that the shape of this histogram is much different than the shape of the histogram for a single play. Now we have this kind of roughly symmetric, almost normal distribution of values centered at 3.5, the average, but trailing off in either direction. The reason that happens is that when we play a game 10 times, you might get some ones and you might get some sixes, but on average, when you average things out, those extremes are going to sort of cancel each other out and you're going to end up with sort of an average that's close to the center. This result, which is entailed in the mathematical result, the central limit theorem, is indeed one of the most essential results to statistics. And we'll see it play a role time and time again when we discuss hypothesis testing and confidence interval estimation in future units.